Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. This week's video, we are talking about the March algorithm. All right guys, so the March algorithm is the assessment mode that we use in a tactical environment. A lot of other environments are starting to adapt it like civilian EMS. And essentially it's a way of addressing life, life threats on our patients. So when we come up to a patient in a non-permissive environment such as a tactical uh, situation, our number one priority is always going to be neutralizing the threat. If the patient has just gone down, they've been shot, they're starting to bleed out, they still have a couple minutes before that becomes an issue. So in that case, we need to make sure that whatever injured him is not going to injure us. That kind of goes in line with scene safety. So in a tactical environment, that's uh, either arresting or shooting or getting out of the range of an active shooter or a violent perpetrator. Um, in civilian EMS, that might just be moving somebody out of traffic or uh, away from a cliff face, away from a fire, something like that. Once we've done that, then we're going to actually start our medical care. So if at all possible, if it's non-permissive, I'm gonna have him self-address his bleeding. So if he has a tourniquet, he can do self-application. If this is a mass casualty or somebody's trained on scene, there might be an officer down, but we're moving on to another objective, I might drop him a kit so he can start applying those tourniquets to himself. Obviously doing wound packing on yourself isn't really feasible. In this case, uh, doing the tourniquet is one of the only things they're gonna be able to do for self-aid. We're going to assume that this patient cannot do any of that for us, and we're also going to assume that the threat has been neutralized. We're no longer in a non-permissive environment. We're at least in a warm zone where the threat has been um, taken somewhere else. So as I come down to him, my first step is going to be identifying sites of massive hemorrhage. That's the M in the March algorithm. And we're gonna come up to the patient, we're gonna ask them where they're hit, but we also have to confirm just in case there's multiple wounds that they're not aware of. So sir, sir, do you know where you're hit? Doesn't know. We have to perform a blood sweep, and this is just taking our hands and running them over their body to make sure that they're not coming out bloody, there's nothing we have to address right away. So in this case, he's got armor on. I don't wanna take it all the way off, but I am gonna undo his quick release buckles. I'm gonna take my hand, just run it over his head really quick, back of his neck, under his front plate, and then under his back plate there, and I'm checking my hands each time. I'm gonna run down both arms, and then we're gonna run down both legs, making sure I'm getting where I can't see, looking at my hands the whole time. Now, I don't wanna be wearing black gloves for this because that won't show blood very well. Um, in this case, it didn't come up with anything, but if we did find a major bleed in an extremity, that's when I would take a tourniquet and apply it. If there's a major bleed at a junctional site, so base of the neck, armpit, groin, we're going to take a quick clot gauze and we're going to uh, pack it as much as possible. So we've stopped the bleeding right away. Um, they're not losing any more blood. We've kind of stopped that clock from ticking. We're gonna move to their airway and that's just making sure that they have a clear line of communication from their nose and mouth to their lungs. If I have to move on, I'm not gonna be with this patient. This patient is unresponsive. I might take them and I might roll them into the recovery position, which is just on their side, arm above their head, and that's gonna allow fluids to drain uh, out of their mouth and they're not going to aspirate on it. If I'm working on him and he doesn't have active fluid in his airway, I'm okay keeping him um, on his back just like this. What I might do if he's unresponsive is insert a nasopharyngeal airway, and that's not going to protect his airway at all. It's just gonna make sure there's good communication from his nose to his lungs, keep that line open. Next, we come to our respirations. So this is the R in the March uh, algorithm. Now for this, we actually have to make sure he's breathing. So we've made sure that there's a line of air connected from his nose and mouth to his lungs. Now we have to make sure he's actually making use of that. So in this case, sometimes just opening the airway will stimulate them to breathe. Sometimes you can just do a painful stimuli that'll get them uh, up and going a little bit more. Uh, periodically though, you might have to perform rescue breaths. So in this case, we have a bag valve mask uh, we can implement. If I'm doing that, I'd like to have some kind of advanced airway like we did before. Um, or he might just be breathing on his own and then we're gonna leave that be. Now, one additional thing in this section is going to be applying chest seals. So if he has been shot uh, in his chest, he has what's called a sucking chest wound. 
that's going to be something where I want to take a chest seal uh, that preferably has a valve on it, put it over that wound, making sure it allows for full lung expansion. So one other thing to do in the respiration sequence is going to be your needle decompressions. And this is taking a needle, inserting it into the uh, thoracic wall. And if they have what's called a tension pneumothorax, so that's when a mass of air builds up inside the chest cavity and pushes over the mediastinum, potentially causing hypotension uh, and signs of obstructive shock. A needle decompression just vents that air and allows the chest to decompress taking the pressure off those vital organs and it will help improve their hemodynamics if they were suffering from a tension pneumothorax. Now the next part, the C in the March algorithm is going to be your circulation. So this is when we're looking at uh, how's his blood flow and we're actually stopping a little bit of internal bleeding for this section. So this is where we're going to do an IV or an IO if we have to give blood products or other medications or just fluids if he's severely dehydrated. We're going to apply a uh, pelvic binder and that's going to bring his hips together. So if we suspect a massive pelvic injury, you can lose up to three liters um, in your pelvis. And this takes that open book fracture, closes it up. Uh, so you're losing a little bit less blood uh, in those instances. We'd also initiate blood product infusions if we have that available to us. One of the last steps is going to be your H. So depending on who you ask, this stands for different things. Uh, most of the time, this is going to be hypothermia. So you start losing the ability to clot at about 95 degrees. So even on a hot day, we have to make sure that a massive trauma patient stays really, really warm. In this case, we might take a space blanket. We'll take whatever uh, thermal insulators we have, throw it on them, and we're going to try to keep them as warm as possible, even if it's really hot outside. When we get into a vehicle, we're gonna crank the heat as much as we can. So that's gonna prevent the hypothermia. The other thing we're gonna look at is head injury. So C-spine precautions in a tactical environment aren't that big of a deal. We don't do a ton of C-collars or full immobilizations here. Uh, it is something we'd consider with a head injury. We're also gonna see if maybe he has massive head trauma and go back through our assessment, see if there's anything we have to redo because of that. The last step is going to be E, so it's March E, and this is kind of an add-on that some people do. The E stands for your extrication, um, moving them out of this building. How are we going to move them? How are we going to get them to definitive care, which would be a hospital or, um, you know, if you're in a war zone, it might just be another medic. So that's going to be our evacuation plan. In this case, I'd take them, I'd put them on a mega mover. Uh, and carry them out to wherever the ambulance is and potentially put them in an armored vehicle. So that's a really quick overview of the March algorithm. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.